Hi guys, so from this month's BBC Good Food magazine, I made this herb roasted lamb rack with butter bean dauphinoise, and it was so good. The beans made a really nice alternative to the traditional potatoes, and there was no peeling or slicing involved, just opening up some tins and draining them. Start off with four cloves of garlic. Crush and peel one of the cloves, and just crush the rest, leaving them in their skin. Then take a small roasting tin and rub the peeled, crushed clove of garlic all over the inside. The recipe suggests using one that's 18 centimeters by 25 centimeters. I think this is a little smaller, I didn't actually measure it, but it's a square anyway, so it's not the exact dimensions, but it worked fine. Then set that aside while you grab a mixing bowl to mix up the cream to go with the beans. Start by adding a teaspoon of corn flour, followed by 180 milliliters of double cream. Start by just mixing in one tablespoon of the double cream first, and mix it in really well before you go ahead and add the rest of the double cream. 150 grams of creme fraiche, two generous teaspoons of Dijon mustard. Now whisk all that up until it's nice and smooth and combined and it has got no lumps. Season with a good pinch of sea salt flakes, and then finally grate in the zest of one lemon. Remember, don't grate into the white pith of the lemon, it's got an awful flavor. You really just want the oily, yellow outer zest. Then finally grate in some Parmesan. The recipe says for about 20 grams of it, but you could add more or less, whatever you prefer. Then take two tins of butter beans and just open them up and drain them before you add them into the, all the cream ingredients. Give everything a really good mix to make sure that all the beans are nicely coated in that thick creamy sauce. Then just transfer them to your garlicky baking dish and set them aside for a little while. Then to prep the lamb, take a rack with seven or eight bones, French trimmed, your butcher will do this for you if you can't find one in the supermarket, and score the fat with a sharp knife. But try not to cut all the way through the fat into the muscle, or the meat will cook too quickly when you're searing the fat. I like to score the fat crisscross like this, so that the maximum amount of fat will render out of it and the remaining fat will be really, really nice and crispy. Now season the fat really well, before you take it over to the hob to sear the fat. I do this a little differently to the recipe. I first take a cold pan and sit the rack of lamb fat side down on it. Then I turn the heat on to medium low and let it sit there cooking really, really gently for about five minutes. Then I turn the heat up to medium and let it sit there for another few minutes before whacking the heat up to high for a few minutes until the fat is golden and crispy. By the way, I'm doing this a little differently. The recipe says you should heat two tablespoons of olive oil over a high heat and sear the lamb fat side down in it for two minutes. But I think gradually increasing the temperature renders out more fat and as long as you haven't scored through the fat, it'll still insulate the meat from the hot pan and it won't overcook. Now add the three crushed cloves of garlic with the skin on to the fat in the pan plus one sprig of rosemary. And allow all that to fry and cook for about 30 seconds before you take it off the heat. Now take that zested lemon you had from earlier and cut off the knobbly end of it and very thinly slice about half of it. Bring back the tray of beans and scatter the lemon slices over them. Now sit the rack of lamb on top of them, fat side up, and add the garlic and rosemary from the pan. Now place in a preheated oven for, at 200 degrees Celsius for 15 to 20 minutes, based on how well done you'd like to serve it. I went for pretty well done because a lot of my guests prefer it that way. Then just go ahead and slice it up and serve up the beans. This is all fairly rich, so I just served it along with some boiled Russian kale that I'm actually growing in the garden for the first time this year and it was all so yummy. Thanks a million for watching guys, I hope you give this recipe a go yourselves at home. If you liked the video, be sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons below and you can check me out on social media if you like, you'll find all the links to my accounts in the description as well as the link to my blog where you'll find this full recipe at www.rookiecook.org.